Now, this little Italian fighter jet is the Ermaci 346. And let me tell you, it of course has fighter jet power. You know, going full power with this plane sure is a lot of fun. It doesn't need a long runway to take off at all. And once you are airborne, I'm pretty sure we're going to do a, um, a vertical takeoff. Come on, let's do that. All right, there you go. Take off and now vertical. There you go. Very strong and powerful engines for sure. Now, the fun fact about this one is though that these very engines were also once fitted to a private jet. Yes, everybody. In today's video, let's finally talk about what the US Coast Guard once did to their Dassault Falcon F-20, which was fitting a Honeywell F-124 fighter jet engine to the plane indeed. Now, the F-124 is kind of a niche engine. It's like used on small combat fighter jets indeed, like the M346 indeed, or the small Czech L-159 plane, but also the quite a lot bigger H- one Ching Kuo, a Chinese fighter jet. This very engine was developed by the 1970s and 80s. And when you develop an engine, you of course need to have an aircraft to test the engine on. A test bed. And you know, engine test beds is something I love to talk about. For example, that one time where they put a turboprop engine in front of a 707. That was kind of weird, but I mean, come on, they were able to do research. And you know, research is most fun when you end up putting an afterburner to a fire fighter jet to make it the strongest fighter jet in the world. <laughs> That's indeed what they did. Yes, it is 1988 when the US Coast Guard tested this indeed. And I've recreated this in the X-Plane Flight Simulator. Now, you cannot see much visual difference. In fact, it's kind of what the airplane in real life looked like indeed, the November 200 Golf Tango. And I mean, they, they managed to make this modification quite well. Something we cannot visually see, though, is how they had to strengthen the airplane for this modification indeed. I mean, if we go full power here and actually activate the afterburner, come on, yeah, there you go, that slightly came on. The problem is the ground, uh, the, yeah, the brakes are too weak for the strong engine, so the airplane just will roll into the terminal building if we put full power. You're always able to tell that the engine placement right here on this plane isn't necessarily ideal for afterburner engines, because you probably will uh, end up um, just burning the whole tail. And so what they had to do was upgrade the tail part of the fuselage to titanium. Yes, same material that was kind of used on the SR-71 um, so that this airplane doesn't like turn into a fireball after a second of flight. I would have loved to be on board this airplane. I mean, once again, fighter jet engine with afterburner. Now, this model itself for the flight simulator isn't necessarily uh, any uh, good. I mean, we can go into the cockpit, which just makes me a bit sad. I don't know why it's so eternally broken. It's, oh my god, it's genuinely sad. Let's see what the rest of the airplane looks like. Once again, US Coast Guard configuration. Looks like a fighter jet. We have uh, what I assume is a lady uh, who's like, I don't know what kind of fashion this is. I mean, this is high heel boots, which is probably quite crazy on a US Coast Guard mission. We have very red nails. And we have a posture that doesn't look like it's comfortable. I mean, what the hell is that all about? Either way, something we're here for is to test the performance. And we're able to do that very well. Now, obviously, taxiing works nice. Something, um, sadly, that doesn't really work well is, like, the recreation of sound. There obviously is always a distinct sound to afterburner engines. taxiing here, I'm really excited to find out whether we can actually go supersonic with this airplane. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have the sharpness in terms of design compared to actual supersonic planes. So this might be interesting, especially with that wing, which doesn't look like this airplane could go very fast considering the sweepness. Now, by the way, before we begin this flight, I wanted to address that I've been kind of lying to you because these engines we've got running down there is far more powerful than the M346 and the L59 because both these airplanes could not actually go supersonic speeds because they didn't have afterburners. In fact, the top speed of this plane is only Mach 0.9 or 5. Once again, no afterburners. But one plane that did have the configuration of engine that we're running on our Falcon is this Chinese fighter jet, which has these engines, but also afterburners, the very afterburners we have here. This plane can reach Mach 1.8. And of course, I've recreated all the metrics here in the flight simulator. I can't wait to see how fast we can go. 
um, and also how fast we're gonna run out of fuel. <laughs> Either way, all is well. We have this 2D cockpit, which uh, makes me a little bit sad, but I think the airplane speed is gonna make up for it. All right looking good i wonder why they didn't just like test these engines on normal fighter jets that would make a bit more sense honestly all right come on let's do it given full power now yes and you see the afterburner which is quite red which doesn't really look like the real life version but here we go oh my god look at that acceleration this is insane ah oh, all right there we go let's put the flaps up we're already at half a mach here this is an immensely fast airplane now we're at mach 7 and we're climbing we can literally do the vertical takeoff <laughs> yeah the power to weight ratio on this thing is absolutely insane i mean the normal Dassault falcon had the general electric cf 700 engines which deliver 20 kilonewtons of thrust whereas the F-124 engines can deliver more than twice than that with afterburners. <laughs> now, I accept that this is probably not the most accurate representation of physics, you know? But I just really want to see. I mean, even at ground level, almost ground level, I mean, we're below the mountains for sure. How fast can we go? I mean, I'm not even talking about like 50,000 feet. I'm talking about flying supersonic at 5,000 feet. Come on, here now, Mach 8.3. This is just genuinely insane. Let's see what the top speed is down here. Uh, I think we might have reached our top speed once again. Thing about flying supersonic, it's also mostly about how the airplane is shaped and its wings. And so here, Mach 8.5. But this is crazy for 5,000 feet. Now, these engines, by the way, must be the loudest ever, which is probably the main reason <laughs> why you'd never see a plane like this be fitted with afterburners. I mean, we know how extremely loud fighter jets are. No airport would ever allow that. All right, Mach 8.5. Let's maybe try to climb now, which shouldn't be a problem at all. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm just letting go of the controls. And the airplane turns into a rocket, which is great. Well, also not really losing much speed here. That is just insane. Now, while we're nicely climbing without any disrupt and cease, let's look at the fuel flow here. Right now, we have a fuel flow of 713 gallons per hour, which is great because this airplane has a fuel tank of 1,400 gallons an hour, so this airplane can fly for like actually two hours. That's actually not bad. Yes, we've kind of destroyed the range of this airplane, but look, we're now at proper altitude already. That was a quick climb of 46,000 feet, and look, we are definitely able to go supersonic. Up, oh, there we go. Supersonic speed. No problem at all. Obviously, air is thinner. It's much easier to cut through it. Now the airplane is pointing down for some reason. All right, we're the fastest ever fighter jet in the world. Now at one point times the speed of sound, we now have a fuel flow of a lot more. Oh, wow, the fuel flows. Okay, we're going to run out of fuel in a second, but there we go. We are the fastest private jet in the world. Now, I do have to admit, I have turned off the thing where when you over-G the airplane, your plane falls apart like it does in real life. We're definitely exceeding red line speeds here at an indicated airspeed of 480 knots. So these engines would be able to make the airplane fall apart in midair while just going full power. And now within one hour, we can actually you know, completely drain the fuel tank. But look, we haven't actually reached our top speed yet. We're not, uh-oh, we're gonna actually be faster than the Concorde, which I don't believe is very realistic. All right, can we turn on auto autopilot? Does that work? Oh, oh, I've exceeded the red line speed at two times the speed of sound. That's great news. I'd love to test the performance a little better. I mean, they must have created an airplane that can like take off from anywhere. All right, come on, Falcon F-20. Everything is good. Oh, look, we can even actually we can open the door. I can close it again. All right, let's do it. Full power. Come on. Yes, and that is full power. Let's release the brakes now. You can... Oh, my God. Just the sheer speed here is just crazy. Let's put out some flaps. We're overspeeding the gear. We're so fast and fast. Oh, my God. That's just insane. We're so fast, in fact, that the engines are slightly putting the airplane a little bit down. And so it's hard to even take... <laughs> uh, gear over speed. That was insane! Now the problem is about this plane. Landing will be quite a challenge. While the Falcon 20 actually has quite a low stall speed of like 80 knots or so, these fighter jet engines are unable to do reverse thrust. And so landing performance wouldn't be too well. Let's try to do that anyway. Come on. Down there is St. Bartholomew's runway. You should be able to pull this off. Yes, let's do a successful fly on our afterburner. Okay. Uh-uh. Never mind. The airplane doesn't really fly very well. Uh-uh-oh. We're low. We're low. We're dying. 
Okay, we've died. We've killed ourselves. Um, this has gone well. All right, let's pull this off again. Maybe at an airport that actually is able to fly this plane. We can't go very slow in this plane, as it turns out. By the way, the flaps are completely out, but um, the cockpit won't show us that. This is kind of a broken model. Come on, let's put her down nicely. Make a good landing or something. Uh oh, that wasn't a good. That, that wasn't a good. That was a. Uh oh, we're dolphining. All right, that's fine. No worries. We can stop. Barely. These brakes aren't nearly as powerful as the engine is, but there we go. We are stopping with this plane now. That's a good start. Now, of course, you may wonder what happened to this airplane. I mean, the mission was successfully fulfilled, I guess. We don't know much. The very Falcon 20 that was built in 1968 did its last flight in 2008, and more we don't know. But at least it didn't crash during the experiments. So, everybody, keep testing engines. How about you put a... G90 on a 737. And everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Durham, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.